everyone. I have played Stardew Valley for 42 hours every day for the past 11 years. And here are some of the things that I have learned in that time. Enjoy! Yep, it might not seem like it, but foraging is actually an incredibly important skill to level up. So collect every forageable you see. You don't have to go out of your way, just don't skip a bunch of forageables in the early game. Getting to level 4 foraging before salmon berry season is a good way to set you up for the rest of spring, because those berries can give you a decent amount of energy. You should also try and reach level 6 foraging before summer, because then you'll be able to craft lightning rods. Summer is the season with the most thunderstorms, so getting those lightning rods before it storms is just a good idea. If you love forageables and want to maximize your foraging experience, make sure to head to the beach every single day between the 12th and 14th day of summer. During this period, it is also known as crab mating season, and the amount of forageables that you will find on the beach is dramatically increased. If you want to save energy but still need wood in the early game, don't chop down trees all together. It is more effective to chop them down until they are just stumps because you can only get one foraging XP from chopping down those stumps but will take 5 hits to harvest. When compared to chopping down the trunk will give you 12 foraging experience for 10 hits. It just makes sense. If you struggle with fishing in the early game, when the fishing bar is small, buy a training fishing rod for 25 gold. This fishing rod will result in you catching easier fish. But more importantly, this fishing rod's fishing bar is as big as if you were level 5 fishing, making catching fish considerably easier, especially on controllers and mobile. Just remember to swap out to a normal fishing rod once you have reached level 5 fishing. It only costs 2000 gold to upgrade your inventory. It's really cheap and will seriously make a big difference. Try and upgrade your inventory as soon as you can, but either way, craft a chest and place it right next to the elevator in the regular mines. Even with an upgraded inventory, you will fill your inventory really fast. So after you reach a level that has an elevator on it, quickly leave the mines, drop off your loot in the chest, and head back into the floor you were just on. This will make a huge difference over time. Now you might not have to decide between keeping 3 slime or the diamond you absolutely need. You should also just place chests around your favorite fishing spots as well. It really sucks when you catch a bunch of fish and run out of inventory space and are forced to unnecessarily eat a fish or have to throw it in the trash. Do the right thing. Place chests everywhere. Okay, so don't place chests everywhere. If a chest is in the path of a villager, they will absolutely destroy that chest and you will lose everything that is inside it. So do place them everywhere, just place them strategically. Always be mindful before buying seeds, since crops can only grow in certain seasons. If you plant new crops too late in the season, they could not be ready before the end of the season and die when the season changes. This mistake is really easy to avoid, but if you do make this mistake, it will set you back by a huge amount because seeds ain't cheap. Don't waste your time buying random furniture pieces from Pierre, Robin, or the traveling merchant. To properly decorate, you will need to play around with all kinds of furniture, and if you buy the furniture, it will drive you nuts because it's really expensive and the inventory is really random. Instead, just save up and buy a furniture catalog from Robin for 200,000 gold. It seems expensive, but it's worth it, you'll see. You can also buy a catalog for wallpaper and flooring from Pierre for 30,000 gold. Processing machines are great. They will greatly increase the value of your crops, fruit, and animal products. But they can also take up quite a bit of space on your farm. So leverage deluxe sheds. Each deluxe shed can hold a total of 137 processing machines in them. But on the outside, the shed will only take up 21 tiles of space. It just makes sense. You can also place down a single processing machine on the outside of your sheds so you know when the machines are ready for collecting. You can save a tiny bit of time by holding shift and clicking items to complete community center bundles really fast as well. Yeah, this probably won't save you a ton of time, but it is really convenient. 
Farming for cinder shards is really tedious and time consuming, so if you don't have many yet, you could just use a diamond to get 3 random enchantments on any weapon. That way you can boost your damage right now and get the specific enchantments later when you have the cinder shards to spare. Rings are really great in this game. There are a few rings that are so good, they actually just become mandatory. The burglar ring is one of those rings. To get the burglar ring, you will need to defeat 500 dust sprites, which might seem like a tedious task, but it is completely worth it. The burglar ring will result in gathering so much more resources from defeating enemies that you will be swimming in resources before you know it. Some of the best uses for the burglar ring is defeating those flame guys in the volcano for cinder shards, defeating dust sprites for coal, and most importantly, defeating carbon ghosts in the dangerous versions of the mines to get a ridiculous amount of omni geodes. Don't underestimate Monster Musk. Monster Musk will greatly increase the amount of enemies that will spawn in the regular mines and in the Skull Cavern. This might seem good for people who are looking for a challenge, but this is actually good for another reason. Pair your Monster Musk with the Burglar Ring and you will get so much loot by defeating enemies. The Mutant Bug Lair only really has one use. You come here to retrieve the Dark Talisman so that you can complete the wizard. Quest. But what do you do with this area after that? Well, there are two amazing uses for this area. First, weeds will respawn in this area every single day and you can collect around 80 pieces of fiber from this area every single day. But if you don't need fiber, you could fill up this entire area with processing machines like this. Now that is a huge space saver. I learned this trick recently. If you fill up your basement with casks like this, you will maximize the space in your basement and age a crazy amount of wine all at the same time. But this method has no paw, meaning you will have to pick up your casks to collect all of them. Well, there is a method to make this so much easier. Use a fully upgraded hole to take all of the aged wine out of the casks. Then make a small path where you need it. This technique is so much faster than using an axe to make a path and manually collecting the wine. It just makes sense. Hops is one of the most profitable crops in the game if you turn them into pale ale. Since pale ale sells for 12 times more than the hop crop and it only takes 2 in-game days. But hops grow off of trellis meaning it will block your path and can be a little bit annoying. Well this is where Junumo huts come in. Junumo huts do not care about trellis and they will not block them at all. So if you are looking to make tons of gold with pale ale, set up your hop crops like this around a Junumo hut. Catching fish can be very lucrative, especially if you manage to catch iridium quality fish. But catching iridium quality fish is tough because you will need to get a perfect catch. But if you are confident in your fishing ability, you could just use the dresser spinner. This fishing tackle will ensure every fish you catch will be iridium quality as long as your fishing level is high enough. This could indeed be a good source of money. Give it a try sometime. There are a few recipes in the game that need a specific fish, like the seafoam pudding recipe that needs a midnight carp. These fish are not available throughout the year. They can only be caught at night and they can be tough to catch as well. If you want an unlimited supply of a specific fish, like a midnight carp for example, all you need to do is catch 10 of them, then place all of them inside of a fish pond. Then use your fishing rod to remove one fish from the fish pond. This means that the fish pond will have one empty slot. After a few days, the fish will reproduce and the slot will be full. Then when there are 10 fish in the fish pond again, just take one out and use those fish for whatever you want. This is great for those fish that are required for some really good recipes. Refined quartz is a surprisingly useful resource considering it is a low tier resource. You can find quartz in a few ways. You could place glasses and broken CDs into recycling machines. You could simply place quartz into a furnace with some coal. But you could also place a single piece of fire quartz into a furnace to get three refined quartz. You won't believe how long I played this game without knowing about fire quartz. 
And yeah, that's all I have for you in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below. Hit subscribe, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, do all of the things. But for now, I will see you in the next video.